However, by this point, the Scottish Rite Masons had already achieved many prominent positions in the governments on both local, state, and national federal levels. The eagle on the Great Seal of the United States is essentially similar to the eagle emblazoned on the presidential seal of the executive branch of the U.S. government. Both show the same bald eagle holding arrows and olive branches behind an American flag shield, clutching a banner in its beak that reads, E Pluribus Unum, Latin for the saying, All for One. However, the eagle on the Great Seal and thus imprinted on our money, possesses one trait the eagle on the presidential seal lacks. That is the presence above the eagle's head of the hexagrammatic constellation of 13 pentagrams that was added sometime following the great seal's original design by Trenchard in the late 1770s. This six-sided hexagram star of 13 pentagram points does not appear in the presidential seal and is similar in shape and significance to a symbol that appears in only one other place during our modern era. On the flag of Israel, the hexagram star symbolizes the seal of King David given to his son Solomon, who used it to design and command the building of the first temple to the Hebrew God. This temple was built in Jerusalem in the Holy Lands in modern-day Israeli-occupied Palestine. The reverse side of the Great Seal is also shown on the back of the U.S. $1 Federal Reserve note. The ominous emblem has come for so many to symbolize the conspiracy for a global dictatorship, the eye in the triangle above the pyramid with no capstone was never truly a Masonic symbol, but was a symbol of the contemporary, competitive, and clandestine cult, the Bavarian Illuminati. Above and below it reads the slogan, Annuit Queptus Novus Ordo Seclorum, meaning, Fortune favors the New World Order. Being in Latin, the language of Rome, this message may appear to have been, when conceived, a warning from our Masonic founders against the influence on American government by Catholic papal interests. The motif of the eye in the triangle atop the pyramid with no capstone is labeled at its base in Roman numerals with the year of the USA's founding. It was in this same year the Bavarian perfectibilists of Dr. Adam Weishaupt became the Illuminati and attempted to infiltrate Jacobin masonry in order to redirect its goals from within. The eye in the triangle itself is believed to have been meant as an Illuminati symbol of God. Because the depiction of God is forbidden in Islam, believed impossible in Hebrew Judaism, and prescribed against as idolatry by Catholicism, the symbolic depiction of God in this Illuminati symbol is patently satanic and thus shows not the universal Father God, Yehovah Allah, but only the Gnostic demiurge called Satan. Because of the prescription against painting the portrait of God were adhered to by most monotheists, it was rare to find a depiction of the Holy Father deity in art until the beginning of the Renaissance in Italy, contemporary to the late Sephardic era in Spain. This period of high arts and sciences being developed rapidly gives us this depiction by Antoniazzo Romano of God as an old Caucasoid complexion man with a long gray beard. Above his head is a triangular halo symbolizing Catholic Trinitarianism. In this depiction of Christ's Last Supper, called Supper at Amos, by Jacopo Carucci, called Panormo, from 1525, we see the first use of the eye in the triangle motif to symbolize the all-seeing eye of God, called since the Eye of Providence. The Eye of Providence was a commonly occurring symbol 
in the work and craft tools of Blue Lodge York Wright Free and Accepted Masonry around the time of the founding of the U.S., the drafting of its constitution, and the formation of its democratic republic government by Freemasons. Here, the eye of providence looks down over a host of Masonic symbols, signifying God as dominant to all the working craft tools. When Trenchard, a Freemason, designed the U.S. Great Seal for the new government of America, there was no such symbol at that time in any form of free and accepted masonry as the eye above the pyramid below. It was seen as a new symbol meant to symbolize a new order ruled over from the new world. Thus the eye of providence symbolized not God, but the conspiracy as dominant above the great work of Freemasonry. The closest Freemasonic symbol at the time of the Great Seal's design to the proposed motif for its reverse side, the eye above the pyramid, was the beehive. During the era of the American Revolution, the York Rite held the beehive symbol to be a warning to individual Masons to avoid being a drone to the hive mind and to think for themselves. By the time of the U.S. Civil War, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry had supplanted that meaning for the same symbol with their own, which revolved around the beehive signifying industriousness, safety in a large numbered group, strength of purpose, focus of willpower, and direction of goal. The thirteen steps of the pyramid on the Great Seal are said to signify the thirteen British colonies that unified to form the first states of America's democratic republic. The year in Roman numerals at the base is 1776, the year of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. However, the capstone of the pyramid is missing in accordance with the Mason myth regarding the royal arch, and so this would signify an additional step level. The 13 stripes and 13 stars on the original American flag also symbolize the 13 American states formed from the 13 British colonies, and so we see the similar motif of 13 horizontal bars of alternating red and white on the original U.S. flag as the 13 steps up from the base of the pyramid to the top level of its missing capstone on the reverse of the U.S. Great Seal. The most Masonic trait of this originally Illuminati-influenced symbol is its design depicting sacred geometric ratios such as one-half and one-third, or the harmonic and golden means. These measurements are known to date back at least as far as ancient Greece, seem to have been used in calculating the inner chambers of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, and signify an important symbol to all speculative Freemasons in the form of Euclid's 47th proposition from Book 10 of his Elements of Geometry. The ratios between the level of the pyramid's missing capstone, the base of the eye and the triangle above this, and the apex of the eye's triangle above that, form the golden ratio proportion, and this can be depicted as a spiral that reduces its size toward the pupil of the eye in the very center of the triangle. It could be this sacred geometrical ratio that is symbolically implied by the strange triple concentric rings of the iris around the pupil of the eye in the triangle on the reverse side of the great seal. While being particularly appealing toward masons by incorporating these ratios, this side of the great seal was never meant to be seen by the eyes of uninitiates. Hence, why it is printed so small on money that it is nearly impossible to tell that the iris has three concentric rings. Having now examined the symbolism of the great seal designed by Freemasons at the time of the American Revolution, we will next begin to look at the lives of those Masons who founded the American government system as a democratic republic. The symbolism on the seal they invented for the form of government clearly does not depict the nature of a democratic republic, as we shall see in further lectures soon. Instead, the eye in the pyramid below the eagle above 
symbolize a Ponzi scheme, alike that proposed by Weishaupt for doubling the membership in the Perfectibilists, which was the dream of the American Freemasons who started the Revolutionary War, who were Jacobin anti-Papists, but who were not Bavarian Illuminati. Here is the face of America's first president, General George Washington, who came to fame by many victorious battles during the American Revolution. Is this the face of the first dictator over America's shadow government, comprised of Freemasons working behind the scenes of public politics, to achieve the Illuminati goals listed in the protocols of a single global dictator? Past Politics 101C The Masonic Revolution Here we see the appearance and garb of a common couple of colonialist aristocrats. He wears a wig of white horsehair, she a lace collar, both frilled sleeves, she a corset and a hoop skirt, he a coat with tails, a cravat, silk vest and garters, etc. In short, they are dressed to the tees in the latest fashions of Britain and France and have an air of wit that attracts reverence about them. In short, they are fops. Here is how the Puritan commoner of the American colonists looked most usually to these colonialist aristocrats. Charged in kangaroo courts with empty crimes such as witchcraft, Alike the era of the Inquisition, the Puritan Christian lower class serfs in the American colonies had little or no rights under British rule, and paid import taxes on all products so steep they were held in perpetual bankruptcy and converted to the level of debt slaves. This drastic class disparity finally came to an explosive head when a group of Freemasons dressed as Native Americans boarded a British ship in Boston Harbor and proceeded to unload its cargo into the harbor's water. This event, called soon afterwards the Boston Tea Party, sparked a revolutionary inspiration in commoners across the British colonies in America. Rallying around the cry of freedom with such slogans as Give me liberty or give me death, the commoner colonists were quickly rounded up and conscripted into a guerrilla tactic, plain clothes, irregular army, comprised of regiments of armed militias under the leadership of General George Washington. In spite of slim odds resulting from unusually extremely cold weather conditions, Washington's troops, camped at Valley Forge, managed to cross the Potomac River to win one of the most decisive victories for the American colonists in the war against the British occupation. Washington, following the Revolutionary War, presided over the ratification and signing of the Constitution of the newly forming United States of America, and was present during many of the debates in the Continental Congress that shaped the future destiny of the American government into its eventual form as a representative democratic republic. Naturally, as one of the best generals during the American Revolution, George Washington was picked as the first President of the United States for his popularity with the people and for his close friendships with the other Founding Fathers. On his deathbed, George Washington was surrounded by many of the brightest minds alive at his time and had helped with them to shape the history of a new nation into a form of democracy they believed could be preserved through long decades of intervening times yet to come. So who was this charismatic, wig-wearing American patriot who saw the value of defending democratic ideals like personal freedom and representative government as important enough to risk his own life on the battlefield to uphold as virtues. The general who would become the first president of the newly founded nation of the United States of America, George Washington, was first and foremost